Every year in Britain, around three million animals are killed in vivisection. Many millions more are killed as surplus. Worldwide, it's a staggering 100 million. Scientists say they don't suffer. It's not true. They are cut open or have limbs amputated to see how their bodies work. They are slowly poisoned, infected with lethal viruses, brain damaged and starved in psychology tests, surgically mutilated in medical experiments. Why such suffering? They claim it's to ensure the products we use and the things we eat are safe. And they say we'll die from terrible diseases unless animals are used to find cures. Everyday products are tested on animals. It's called toxicity testing, which means poisoning. There are no anaesthetics to stop the pain. Products are sprayed, injected, or force-fed to animals, and the effects monitored, for months even. This is the Dray's test, used for testing chemicals. Rabbits are used because they have big eyes and no tears to wash away the chemicals, or the pain. Most experiments are done without anaesthetics, and there's no guarantee of painkillers when the animals come round. Even when they are anaesthetised, it's often not done by a professional anaesthetist. Carrying out brain surgery on a monkey involves great pain. They say it's mostly rats and mice who are used, as if they don't feel pain. In fact, many different animals are used. Including, of course, dogs. Beagles are used because they are friendly and trusting. It's wet, I shouldn't sit back too far, he's pissed everywhere. You bad it, shut up. Sit still. What a way to repay them. I haven't got the he's patience today, I really haven't. Oh, shut up. Hey, no! I'm really getting f***ing bad with you! Then, of course, there are monkeys. Many are imported from abroad. And some are caught in the wild. Just imagine the fear and confusion these animals suffer when they're torn away from their family groups. These barren cages are the only home they'll know until they are experimented on and killed. They are all eventually killed. Not all researchers are deliberately cruel. They become hardened, and the animals become little more than research tools. Regulations aren't enforced, and the main purpose of the law is to protect researchers from being prosecuted for cruelty, not to protect the animals. I think some people have asserted that animals don't really feel pain as an argument for doing experiments on them, but that has to be classed as nonsense. They have all the biological and physical characteristics in place that I have for pain, and they have the chemoreceptors there that can do the job, so I'm sure they feel pain. I feel doing animal experiments, inflicting pain on animals, 
must have a desensitizing and a brutalizing effect on people. Despite this, none of us protested for a moment when a, a, a rabbit was battered to death in front of a class. And this had a very subtle and I think very damaging effect on us as future doctors. I don't think the science is very sound. I don't think that the morals and the ethics have been worked out as well as they should have been. And to think that animals are lower than we are and therefore we can do what we like is a very troublesome argument. Who would you choose? A rat or your mother? Powerful argument that, isn't it? A rat or your mum, dad or little sister? But it's not a real choice. It's science fiction. The animal experimentation industry has told us for years that we must choose between the life of a rat or the life of a loved one. But that's simply not true. What we have to choose is good science or bad science. And animal experimentation is just bad science. Scientists claim they can only find new safe drugs by testing them on animals. But animals are not the same as us and their reactions to drugs are often very different to ours. Morphine puts us to sleep, but excites cats. We pop aspirin for aches and pains. It causes birth defects in mice and rats. The contraceptive pill can cause blood clots in humans. It has the opposite effect in dogs. Dogs don't suffer heart disease when they eat fatty meat, yet they're still used for research into the problem. Rats and mice get different types of cancer from humans, but still they're used for cancer research. It's crazy, but researchers try to recreate human problems in animals who never suffer from them. To mimic heart disease in beagles, they tighten a wire around a blood vessel leading to the heart. They inject cancer cells, sometimes directly into the eye or brain. For arthritis research, animals' joints are injected with chemicals to cause crippling swellings. So it's not surprising that drugs developed on animals often go wrong. Thalidomide was meant to cure morning sickness, but caused dreadful birth defects. Heraldin was introduced to relieve heart conditions, but caused blindness. Opram was meant to relieve arthritis, but led to liver damage. And there are plenty of others. Testing is so unreliable that prescription drugs are now the fourth biggest cause of death in the USA. If we'd relied on rat tests, we'd still believe that humans didn't need vitamin C, that smoking doesn't cause cancer, and that alcohol doesn't cause liver damage. Heart bypass surgery was put on hold for years because it didn't work on dogs. It was denied for decades that asbestos could poison humans because it didn't poison animals. Researchers refused to believe that benzene could cause cancer in humans because it didn't cause it in animals. Polio researchers were misled for years about how we catch the disease because they were working on monkeys.